This summer, Pope Francis released his first encyclical. The title of it, Laudato Si, comes from the opening lines of a hymn written by St. Francis. St. Francis, as you all know, is the patron saint of the environment. In taking his own name and the title of his encyclical from St. Francis, Pope Francis clearly wants to stir up our hearts to become more aware of how deeply interconnected we are with the natural world. This is an historical moment in the Church. It is very likely that this encyclical, Laudato Si, will become one of the most important sources of the social doctrine of the Church to have been written in the last 130 years. It offers us a new way of imagining our relationship to the world. The earth is our common home. We are asked to view it as a sacrament of communion and to work toward the development of an integral ecology, an understanding of the web of life that allows for the flourishing of all life, not just human life. It is a document that calls for deep conversion in each one of us. It is a plea to not just keep going on in the same way, blind to the way our everyday and ordinary decisions affect our neighbors and the planet. It is a call to evaluate our relationship with God by examining the quality of our relationship to our neighbor and to the created world. The questions it forces on us are not easy to confront. Of course, the gospel isn't easy either. In the first chapter, Pope Francis lays out the six most pressing challenges facing us today. These are challenges at the global, as well as at the personal, individual level. Pollution, climate change, contaminated water and lack of available water, diminishing biodiversity, the breakdown of society, and global inequality. He writes that because of our throwaway culture, in which we think nothing of using something once and throwing it away, the earth, our home, is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. He calls climate change one of the principal challenges facing humanity in our day, but laments that political and economic interests get in the way of having a transparent conversation about the problems we are all facing. Water is another area of concern. Access to safe drinking water is a basic and universal human right, but there are still entire populations of people who regularly get sick and die because they do not have access to clean water. In other parts of the world, like in our California Central Valley, whole communities are now without access to natural sources of water. They've dried up because they've been overused. Pope Francis notes that thousands of plants and animal species disappear every year. We don't know what the consequences of this will be. Surely, if we are as interconnected as both our faith and science teach us, the loss of these life forms will impact our own lives in some way. Closely linked to the degradation of the natural world is the breakdown of society. Our models of economic development promote the flourishing of the very few, the 1%. The rest of us, especially in large urban areas, suffer the consequences of the pollution and inequality generated by economic development. All of this, from pollution and climate change to a consumer-driven economy, affects the most vulnerable of us the most profoundly. Pope Francis's critique is prophetic and uncomfortable, especially when he identifies the root causes of these issues. The causes are not just the big international corporations, but our own behavior here, yesterday, and today. For example, Pope Francis praises that we use technology to generate and share knowledge, information, even ourselves. But he asks us to consider the advantages those with access to the internet, to a Twitter account, have in advancing their own political and economic interests. How do we hear the voice of those who don't even have a telephone? Closely related to our uncritical use of technology is what Pope Francis calls the technocratic mentality that sees all technological advances as good, no matter what. 
This is a kind of mentality that led to the harvesting of fetal organs from aborted babies in order to conduct medical research. We fail to realize that we are also creatures of God. Rather than see ourselves as part of creation, we set ourselves above it, as masters rather than stewards. All life is from God, not just human life. This means that all life is sacred and must be honored. To think otherwise is to be guilty of anthropocentrism. Pope Francis observes that we are infected with practical relativism. This means that we care only about what is most convenient to us. We think nothing of throwing away paper plates, paper plates that came from once living trees and which, when thrown away, will end up in landfills. We use them because they're more convenient than washing dishes. This is practical relativism. The economic models of development, which Pope Francis identified as a problem, are driven by a mentality that elevates the product over the worker and cares more for the end result than the quality of life of the craftsman. This is dehumanizing. A final threat comes from biological technologies, such as those that allow us to genetically modify organisms in ways beyond the ordinary capacity of nature. This has sometimes been beneficial, but we have now engineered and can grow crops that Roundup can't kill. What effects will this have on the bees who pollinate these crops, and on those of us who consume them? The challenge is both personal and global. So what are we to do? Pope Francis invites us in chapter 2, the Gospel of Creation, to rediscover the wisdom of Scripture. The creation stories, for example, suggest that human life is grounded in three fundamental and closely intertwined relationships with God, with our neighbor, and with the earth itself. According to the Bible, these three vital relationships have been broken, both outwardly and within us. This rupture is sin. We are warned that, inasmuch as we all generate ecological damage, we are called to acknowledge our contribution, smaller or greater, to the disfigurement and destruction of creation. For to commit a crime against the natural world is a sin against ourselves and against God. The challenge Pope Francis lays at our feet is this. Let us rediscover and recapture an awareness of the interconnectedness of all creation. The world is a sacrament of communion. Let us be open to realizing that in destroying the natural world, we make it impossible to be fully human. Pope Francis asks us to promote honest and open debate. This isn't about politics or science, but about dialogue on what it means to be human on what our responsibilities are now so that future generations are not left sifting through our pile of trash, so that our children and grandchildren have an opportunity to discover their humanity and their God through creation. Finally, Pope Francis asks us to examine our own lives and to begin to develop ecological virtues. Let us sacrifice our convenience in order to be less wasteful. Let us seek to discover our own worth as a child of God by discovering the sanctity of all of God's creation. For each creature possesses its own particular goodness and perfection. Each of the various creatures, willed in its own being, reflects in its own way a ray of God's infinite wisdom and goodness. Let us not use these things mindlessly. Rather, let us approach all of creation as though something sacramental.